In this video, you're going to learn how to solve trigonometric equations. We're going to talk about how to write a general solution as well as from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to go through eight examples. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do these on your own, and we'll go through them together. The first one, we're going to start off easy and get progressively more challenging. It's 2 cosine x minus square root of 3 equals 0. Now, when you solve these equations, what you want to do is you want to focus on getting that trig function by itself on one side of the equal sign. So let's go ahead and do that by adding square root of 3 to both sides. It's just like solving an algebra equation. It's just with trig functions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2 to get the cosine by itself. So now we're asking ourselves, where is cosine equal to square root 3 over 2? Well, remember, on the unit circle, cosine is going to be the x-coordinate, sine is going to be the y-coordinate, and tangent is going to be y divided by x. So we ask ourselves, where is x square root 3 over 2? Well, you can see it's here at pi over 6. It's also over here at 11 pi over 6. Sometimes what I like to do when I'm doing these problems, I like to make a little sketch for myself uh, just on the side of the paper just so I can kind of see what's happening. So I know it's here, and I know it's here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But if we want to write a general solution, see at this point here and this point here, what we can do is we can say pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, meaning that if we add multiples of 2 pi, we're going to end up at that same point on the circle, and the cosine value is going to be square root 3 over 2 there. Same thing with 11 pi over 6. So we could say 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. So this is our general solution. This is our solution if it just says from 0 to 2 pi. And you got it. So, okay, for number 2, we've got 3 tangent squared x minus 1 equals 0. We want to get that tangent by itself. So let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides of the equation. We've got 3 tangent squared of x equals 1. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3. We're trying to get that tangent by itself. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Remember, when you do that, you get two answers plus or minus square root of 1, which is 1, and then here we have square root of 3. So that's what tangent of x equals. You can rationalize this by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of 3. So that would give us plus or minus square root of 3 over 3 equals tangent of x. Now remember, on the unit circle, tangent is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So we either need to find out where tangent equals 1 over root 3, or if you rationalize it, square root 3 over 3. So y over x. You can see here, 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2. See, if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, see how those 2's cancel, and you get 1 over square root of 3. So we know it's a pi over 6, or a 30 degree reference angle. And you can see it's positive or negative. Tangent is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant, negative in the second and fourth. Because in the second quadrant, the x is negative and the y is positive. In the third quadrant, it's the reverse. The x is positive, y is negative. So y over x is going to give us a negative. So here what we can see, I like to draw a little sketch here. We can see it's occurring over here at these 30 degree reference angles. 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and 30 degrees. But what's interesting is you see how these points right here are diametrically opposed, meaning like a diameter. Same thing with these two points. See how they're across from each other like a diameter? What we can do is we can group those together when we write our general solution. So let's go ahead and start off with pi over 6. Okay, so we're going to say x equals pi over 6 plus pi n this time. Pi because we're just adding 180 degrees. If we add another 180, we're back to this point, etc. See, we're always going halfway around the circle. And you could also say uh, 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. And so that'll take care of these two and those two, and we've got all of them. If it just asks from 0 to 2 pi, then you would just list these individually. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And those would be your four answers, but this is your general solution. Okay, number three, see if you can do this one. We've got 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals 0. Each one of these problems that I'm doing in this video is uh, a little bit different because I want you to learn something new uh, each time. So I'm not going to be repeating like the exact same type of problems. I want to show you something unique. Uh, so here what we're going to do is we're trying to get that sign by itself. I'm dividing both sides here by 2, and then we want to take the square root to get rid of that sine squared there. We want to do the inverse. When we do that, we get two answers, plus or minus square root of 1, which is 1, square root of 2, which is square root of 2. If we rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 2, we get where is sine of x equal to plus or minus uh, square root of 2 over 2. So let's take a look. Now remember, sine on the unit circle is the y-coordinate, 
you can see uh, sine is going to be square root of 2 over 2 here, negative square root of 2 over 2 uh, down here, as well as here, and positive square root of 2 over 2 here. So again, I like to draw a little sketch. You can see it's going to be at these 45 degree reference angles, 45 degrees with the x-axis, right? So all these triangles are the same. But what's interesting in this particular problem is, I don't know if you can see this, but see how these are like at right angles to one another, meaning they're 90 degrees apart? So what I can do is I can group all these together. I can say at pi over 4, if I add multiples of 90, meaning pi over 2 in radians, pi over 2 n. So if I add 90, I end up at this point. If I add another 90, I add it at this point. If I end it at another 90 I'm at this point, and then I'm back to where I started. So what uh, we can do is group these all together in this one expression here, pi over 4 plus pi over 2n. That's where sine is going to be positive root 2 or negative root 2 over 2. Uh, if we wanted to just list them, if it just said what's the answer between 0 and 2 pi, then we just list them individually, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, uh, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, and you got it. Number four, see if you can do this one. We have two cosine squared x minus three cosine x plus one equals zero. What's interesting about this one is we have a squared term as well as a cosine to the first term. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm actually gonna factor it into two binomials. So what we have here is we have two cosine x times one cosine x, it gives us back the two cosine squared x. And if I do negative one and negative one, this will give us negative cosine x negative 2 cosine x, which adds up to negative 3 cosine x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we just factored it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these groups and we're going to set them equal to 0, each of these factors. So 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, and cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So if we add 1 to both sides, we've got 2 cosine x equals 1, divide both sides by 2, Okay, so we're looking at where is cosine equal 1 half, and here if we add 1 to both sides, we say where is cosine equal to 1. So let's look at this one first. So cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. Where is uh, x equal to 1? Well, you can see that's going to be right here at 0. So right here. And then where is cosine a half? Well, we know cosine is, again, the x-coordinate. It's going to be a half here at pi over 3, and also here at 5 pi over 3. So let's go ahead and sketch that, pi over 3, and... 5 pi over 3. So those are going to be our answers, um, but let's see what we can do as far as a general solution. So we said 0, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. But you can see now these ones, they're not in such a way that if I just add like 180 degrees, I'm at one of the other points, or if I add uh, you know, 90 degrees, like uh, one of the other questions we did. Here what we're going to have to do is just do them individually. We're going to have to say 0 plus 2 pi n, meaning if I add multiples of 2 pi, I'm going to end up at this point by going around the circle, you know, one whole revolution. We don't really need the 0 so much, but I'll just leave it for now. Uh, it also could be a pi over 3, which is here, and we can add multiples of 2 pi, so pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then the last one, 5 pi over 3, also plus 2 pi n. Okay, number 5, this is referred to as a multiple angle trig equation, because we've got tangent of not 1x, but 4x equals 1. So how would you solve that problem? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like this is like a group or a chunk. We're going to treat this all like one quantity. So we're going to say tangent of what angle equals 1? Well, we know on the unit circle tangent is y over x, so y divided by x has to equal 1, and that occurs here at pi over 4, as well as over here at 5 pi over 4. Negative divided by negative is going to give us a positive 1. So you can see that these are across from each other, like so. So if we were to write a general solution, we would say 4x, so not x, but 4x, is equal to pi over 4 plus pi n, because we're adding 180 degrees, we're going halfway around the circle each time to end, at, end up at each one of those points. But we don't want to solve for 4x, we actually want to solve just for 1x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by 4. If we do that, that's going to give us x equals pi over 16, plus pi over 4n, and that's our general solution. But if the instructions on your question here say, you know, find all the angles between 0 and 2 pi, what you can do is you can um, start off by taking uh, n equals 0. That would give you pi over 16. And pi over 4 is really like um, 
4 pi over 16, right? So this is really like pi over 16 plus 4 pi over 16 n. So the first angle, if uh, n is 0, is going to be pi over 16. And then if we uh, n is 1, that's going to be pi over 16 plus 4 pi over 16, which is 5 pi over 16. If n is 2, that's 8 pi over 16 plus pi over 16, which is 9 pi over 16. And uh, you want to keep going, but you don't want to exceed 2 pi. So let's just keep going a few more. Let's see if we add another one. This, we keep adding 4 pi over 16 each time. So that's 13 pi over 16, 17 pi over 16, uh, 21 pi over 16, 25 pi over 16. Now, the next one is going to be, let's see, 29 pi over 16. If I go one more, that's going to be 33 pi over 16, but you can see that's more than 2 pi. So we're going to stop there, and these are going to be the answers between 0 and 2 pi. This is going to be your general solution, and you got it. Okay, number 6, we've got sine of x divided by 2 equals 1 half. So again, like the last problem, we think of it as a group. We say sine of what angle equals 1 half. On the unit circle, the sine is the y-coordinate, so you can see sine is going to be a half here at pi over 6, as well over, as over here at 5 pi over 6. So let's just draw a diagram. So that's going to be here and here. Now you can see they're not really like across from each other. You know, they're not adding like 90 degrees each time. We're going to have to write these separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x divided by 2, that's the angle we solve for x divided by 2 equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and x divided by 2 equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now we don't want to solve for x divided by 2, we actually just want to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by 2. So if we do that, that's going to be, come out to x equals 2 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3 plus 4 pi n. And if we multiply through by 2 here, we're going to get um, 10 pi over 6, which reduces to 5 pi over 3 plus 4 pi n. Now this is our general solution, but if it just said find all the angles between 0 and 2 pi, what we can do is we can start off by putting in 0 for n here. We're going to get pi over 3. Uh, we're going to get 5 pi over 3. If we make n 1, you can see that's going to be 4 pi plus pi over 3, which exceeds our 2 pi. Same thing here. If this was 1. This is 4 pi plus 5 pi over 3, which exceeds 2 pi. So these are going to be the only solutions between 0 and 2 pi, but this here is our general solution. Okay, number seven, see if you can do this one, cosecant squared x minus cosecant x minus two equals zero. So up to this point, we've just been working with sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we're getting into some of the uh, reciprocal uh, trig functions here. And so the thing I'm gonna do with this one, because I've got a squared term and cosecant to the first, I'm gonna factor this into two binomials. So you can see cosecant x times cosecant x gives us cosecant squared x and uh, negative 2 times positive 1 gives us negative 2, but cosecant x and negative 2 cosecant x adds up to our middle term, negative 1 cosecant x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each factor equal to 0, make two little mini equations. So cosecant x plus 1 equals 0, and cosecant x minus 2 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we have cosecant x equals negative 1. So add 2 to both sides and we have cosecant x equals 2. Now remember, cosecant is really the same as what? 1 over sine. And negative 1 can be written as a fraction by writing it over 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself. If I take the reciprocal of both sides of these, um, both sides of the equation here, we get sine of x is equal to, it's still going to be negative 1. Over here, cosecant of x is 1 over sine of x, which equals 2 over 1. And if I take the reciprocal of both sides, I get sine of x equals 1 half. So what we have to do now is figure out on the unit circle where is sine equal to negative 1 or a half. So let's take a look. It looks like sine is going to be negative 1 down here, right, at 3 pi over 2. And it looks like sine is going to be a half over here at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, so right there and right there. Now if you look closely, it looks like these are actually 120 degrees apart, or 2 pi over 3 radians apart. So what we can do is we can group these together. We can start off at pi over 6, okay, right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add 2 pi over 3 n. So I mean, if I add 2 pi over 3 once, I uh, get to this angle. I add 2 pi over 3, I get to this angle. Another 2 pi over 3, back to where we started, etc. So that's what x equals as our general solution if we just want to uh, answer the question between 0 and 2 pi, you just list these individual, individually, pi over 6, uh, what do we say, 5 pi over 6, and 
3 pi over 2, and you got it. Okay, last problem number 8. See if you can do this one on your own. We've got tangent squared of x minus tangent of x minus 6 equals 0. So what I'm going to do here on this one is I'm going to factor it into two binomials. So we have tangent of x times tangent of x gives us uh, tangent squared, and negative 3 times positive 2 gives us negative 6. Negative 3 tangent x and positive 2 tangent x adds up to our middle term, negative 1 tangent x, uh, equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we have tangent x minus 3 equals 0 and tangent x plus 2 equals 0. If we add 3 to both sides, we get tangent of x equals 3. If we subtract 2 from both sides, we get tangent of x equals negative 2. Now, on the unit circle, there's no a location where tangent is equal to 3 or negative 2 with the angles that we know. So we're going to have to go to our calculator. Make sure you put your mode into radians. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the tangent inverse of 3. And same thing here, you're going to want to do the tangent inverse of negative 2. Now if you do that, I did that earlier here, you're going to get uh, tangent inverse of 3 is going to come out to 1.25 radians. Tangent inverse of negative 2 is going to come out to, um, let's see, this came out to um, negative 1.11 radians. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to um, draw this on the unit circle here. Now 1.25 is right about here. Okay, because at pi over 2, this is like 1.57, 3.14, 4.71, and 6.28. So we're here in the first quadrant with the 1.25. But where else is tangent positive? Well, it's also positive over here in the third quadrant. And the way that I can get this other angle over here is by adding pi. So if I add pi to 1.25, okay, remember pi is 3.14, we're going to get uh, approximately, what is that? Let's see, plus 3.14, we're getting 4.39. So, so far we have 4.39, 1.25. Over here, we have tangent inverse of negative 2 is negative 1.11. Now, where's negative 1.11? Well, if it's a negative angle, we're going clockwise. It's going to be somewhere over here in the um, fourth quadrant. Okay, so negative 1.11. Now, if we add uh, 6.28, which is 2 pi, we can get this as a positive angle. Okay, so plus 6.28. Or we can also see tangent is going to be negative 2 over here in the second quadrant. So if I was to add 3.14, that would give us this angle here uh, in the second quadrant. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, so we've got negative 1.11 plus 3.14. Okay, so it's 2.03. So instead of the negative 1.11, let's just look at this as 2.03. And we said negative 1.11 plus 6.28. which is 5.17. Okay, so these are all the places on the uh, unit circle between 0 and 2 pi uh, where you're going to get these values of 3 or negative 2. But if we want to write a general solution now, let's uh, go back. So this was 1.25. So x equals 1.25 radians plus uh, what we can do is we can add pi each time. Okay, so pi n. So this is plus pi n. And then same thing over here with um, 2.03, which is this angle. And we can add pi n. So if we add pi, we're going to be down over here at 5.17, pi back to this one, etc. So this is our general solution. And these are the individual ones just going from 0 to 2 pi. So if you want more practice and you want to see another video I did about how to solve trig equations, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll get some more practice there.